are you tired of having question after question once you post your assignment online? Has shifting to online learning been more stressful than dealing with your students in person? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to organize your online platform so that your parents and students have zero questions. Hi, and welcome to another 10 Minutes with the Ignited Teacher. My name is Michelle, and what I do here on this channel is help math teachers like you increase student achievement and deliver high quality math instruction. Shifting so subtly to online learning for math can be a daunting task, especially if you haven't been using this online platform previously. And setting up an online classroom can be much like setting up your classroom at your school. So today what I'm going to do is walk you through how to organize your online platform so that you don't have parents contacting you at one, two, three o'clock in the morning asking the same question that you feel like you have previously answered four or five times. So this is the classwork part of Google Classroom if you're not familiar with it. And in Google Classroom, you have the stream, which I don't use very often, but my students generally go to Classwork, and that is where they will find the setup for Google Classroom. Now, when I, because you all are starting really mid-year, some, some of you all at the end of the year, so this is kind of like a crash course, into setting up your online platform. And this is Google Classroom, but this can be applied to any platform um, for teaching. So I have my Google Classroom expectations. And in here is just Google Classroom rules. And you may want to have some rules and expectations for your parents and your students so they will know what the expectations are. And it doesn't have to be in depth like these, but that it needs to set the tone for learning. And what you're trying to do is make sure that your parents have enough information and understanding that they can relay this information to your students. Secondly, in my Google Classroom organization, I have a daily agenda. Now, my daily agenda, I'm going to pull it up. It's still. All right, so I use a little GIF. I'm a little extra when it comes to that. And I like for my students to be excited about what GIF they're going to see the next weeks because I use the same GIF for the whole week and really the kids don't know that it's really for me so i know that i'm on the correct agenda because i have posted the wrong agenda before so i started using these little gifs to help now i have the daily agenda i have the date and i have the objective just like with your students you need to focus them on what's today what is the day's objective so I have it in student-friendly terms. I can identify the GCF by using division and two color counters. And I have an essential question. You don't have to use an essential question, but I use it because it helps me to make sure that my students have actually mastered the objective. So in this lesson, this was in February, how does the GCF help you to simplify a fraction? And that's something actually you could turn into a, an assignment at the end of the week. You could use Padlet or Flipgrid to have the students actually 
show that they've mastered that through one of those platforms. And then we go through here where I have number one and notice that they are numbered. And they're numbered because my students understand that that signifies sequential order. So you don't have that question, well, do we have to do it in order? Yes, you do. And you might want to put that in here. Complete the assignments in this order. First, Moby Max. CNN Student News, Simplifying Fractions, and Moby Max Review Square Root. And notice I have on here, do not take out your cell phones. And you can put anything that you want in here. So this daily agenda actually guides the students in what they should be doing for this day. So then I go down to class assignments. This helps you, this will help your parents know what assignments are for this week or for that day, however you're rolling it out. So here I had a domain and range worksheet. And if you click on it, I just scanned in a domain and range worksheet. This can be a Google form. It could be anything that you attach for that assignment. And since we're dealing with um, online learning and your students may or may not have what they need at home, you need to choose assignments where it's clear, cut and dry, and all your students are able to do it. Then moving along, I have Flipgrid, Nearpod, and Edpuzzle. These are platforms that I have chosen to use in my classroom. So if I'm telling my students to go to Flipgrid, there's a Flipgrid section. If I'm telling them to go to Nearpod, there's a Nearpod section. And the same thing with Edpuzzle. Now, this is very explicit because you have to understand these are parents and they need to know where to go. If you lump them all together, they're going to be looking for it as if they're looking for a needle in a haystack. And you're going to have more questions than what you need. And you're waking up in, in the morning and you have 20 different questions from either students, teachers, or parents. And what I'm saying teachers, because there are some teachers that you may be sharing your work with or you all may be working collaborative and they still have questions of how you're trying to roll things out. The next part are math skill builder videos. Because I know my students work at below grade level, I put skill builders in and I just put this in here this past school year. So if they needed to go back and refer, I use other people's videos. So this is a video I found on YouTube. And if they needed to see it a different way, I put it there. Order of operations. Then I had dividing exponents. So these are just videos. And yours don't have to be videos. They actually can be pictures of anchor charts. Anything that will help students and parents or even teachers you're working with understand how you are presenting your content because you're not there to explain it to them. Then I have reference tools. Reference tools are, for example, a multiplication chart. I don't know what happened. It must have gotten deleted. Let me see, go back down here. And then you, I have my Algebra 1 star reference sheet. That was for my students because we were getting ready for standardized testing and it cut down on the paper so I just uploaded it into Google Classroom so when I referred to it the students could go to Google Classroom and access it. And then down at the bottom there are some this was for early finishers. I had my math game so coordinate grid practice that came from math playground and just whatever else you want to add to make the thought process in navigating your online classroom to where it's overly explicit to where your students know, okay, if I'm looking for certain things in this 
on this platform, I know where it is. Now, Google Classroom is an excellent platform and it's very streamlined, it's very straightforward. But like I said, setting up this online classroom in such a quick manner, it can cause anxiety for parents and students. You have to realize if you haven't dealt with people who are not educators, everything has to be overly explicit. I cannot say that word more, more, more. That's what you should be thinking about when you're creating your lessons and assigning these things for your parents. I hope that you found this video helpful with organizing your content for your online platform. And if you have any suggestions for new videos for online learning or need more support with online learning, definitely leave it in the comment section below and hit the bell to get notifications for when I upload my next video.